So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for coming, and uh, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to share our experience with you. And I, I come here to present you the experience of the MDG Fund, the MDG Achievement Fund, and uh, my contribution is, is a consideration regarding the use of technology and the special visual technology in evaluation processes. First of all, I would like to, to frame the discussion mentioning the, the favorable con context in which we could implement some of these uh, um, visual or audiovisual or photographic evaluation <coughs> processes. The MTGF work in 50 countries via 130 programs. We call them joint program for the people of the UN and is, is, a, is a term that is known. For the other one, it's very simple. These are programs in which more than one, a single agency is involved and where we work with multiple stakeholders and national partners. Our programmatic area had a, a budget of uh, $700 million, working in eight thematic windows. And uh, we implemented our program in the period 2008-2013. Uh, the program area, as you can see, range uh, from uh, uh, children, food security and nutrition, gender equality, women empowerment, uh, conflict prevention and peace building, and culture and development, and etc. <laughs> when I'm referring to a favorable context, I'm pointing out the singularity of the MDG Fund mm -hmm. in the sense that is join the conference. In the sense that was a, a fund that was investing into pilot programs and was investing into piloting experiences. So now the institutional part is finished, and I, I, and I go to the, uh, to, to the point of, of initiative, right? Uh, well, what, um, what enabled the fact that you could explore into evaluation was the fact that you had a specific initiative that, uh, to, uh, to pilot uh, monitoring evaluation. What we did was giving to nine selected countries a, a specific budget to support the implementation of monitoring and evaluation strategies. The reason <coughs> behind this is the one that investing in monitoring evaluation increases development effectiveness. And, uh, and this monitoring and evaluation pilot that was a budget assigned to each country office through the, the office of a resident coordinator was used both to empower the UN system as a, as a wall, having by case in point an expert of many in the office of a resident coordinator that could, uh, that could uh, uh, implement monitoring evaluation activities and follow up evaluation processes, but at the same time having a component of strengthening national capacity in monitoring evaluation. What, we took, what the MDG Fund uh, uh, tried to do is combine traditional and innovative forms of evaluation. So, and, and we did it under a principle of complementarity because uh, the, the idea is that if we want, to, what we want to emphasize is that if it's true that traditional form uh, of, evalu of, of evaluation are, 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 are pretty widely used in the UN, the innovative one are not that used, but the second one, the latter, the innovative one, do not substitute the, the traditional form of evaluation. This is why I, I speak about the principle of complementarity between the two of them. We know, we all know what is meant by traditional monitoring evaluation products. Uh, I have just here a little sample for you. We have our web page. Each country where we work uh, has a web page. The web page has the program. All the program have monitor, B annual monitoring reports, midterm evaluation, final evaluation. All of them are independent, clearly. And then in these nine countries that are focus country, we have also nationwide country evaluation. So this is the traditional part. And, and regarding the innovation, I will speak about innovative formats. And I have here four examples uh, for you that I would like to briefly share. One is a sustainability photo evaluation in Ecuador. The second one is a participatory photo evaluation in Timor-Leste. The third one is a video evaluation in the Philippines, and the fourth one an, a video evaluation in Colombia. So let's start with the case of Colombia. Um, I think that all of them, the four of them, have weaknesses and some strength points. So if I'm pointing out from time to time a, a strength or a weakness, it's not, it's not because it's a methodology that is less useful than the other one, but because each of them include uh, these two aspects. 
the, the, video, um, the video evaluation in Colombia was mainly oriented to give voices to agents. The example of Colombia is clearly a, a qualitative approach of evaluation based on the collection of testimonies per results. As you know, programs have outputs or outcome and results. So what we did is mainly gathering uh, agents around each result and, make, and ask them to give a, their opinion and filming them. What it, I think that the value added of this approach is that there is a description of change directly introduced by people that were involved in the program. But the shortcoming of this is that this kind of exercise has a, a strong uh, positive slant of the material. I mean, we are, we are sure, as, as the film is edited, you will mainly focus on people that have a positive, uh, mm -hmm. a positive opinion about the program. Mm -hmm. um, what is interesting is that we give different angles of the program, and we exclude the UN officer from this exercise because it's only people of civil society, government, and people of community and, uh, and cooperative, in this case, that were involved into the program. The second case that I would like to present very briefly um, is the case of, of the Philippines. I'm pretty in love with this because it's, it's a case in which agents are in front of the camera and behind the camera. What we mean with this, uh, this is a participatory evaluation. It's not that one of Colombia that is an external actor that film you and put you in front of the camera. Here what was done, and uh, I hope I can summarize it pretty, uh, uh, pretty well, is that uh, they use a methodology to, to gather people from the community and they ask them to, to have a dialogue about the most significant change stories in their community. So there was previous workshop to, to open the floor for discussion about which story we wanted to showcase. The, the main objective of this evaluation was empowering community stakeholders from mobilization and active participation in evaluation processes. Um, I, Briefly recalling the process, first of all, there were workshops uh, on participatory video evaluation, clearly speaking with people about how to use a camera. And, uh, and in this process of dialogue, also some of the stories were surfacing and, and community were called to, to identify the one they wanted to showcase. The second step was gathering individual and collective story. The third one was uh, asking the community to actually film in these stories. Then the film was screened in their community. So after the story was collected, it was filmed. It was a screen and, and, uh, and broadcast in the community. Then we had a chat sharing the product with local and central level partners and stakeholders. And finally, there was a political discussion about the, uh, about the findings. Here I just put some slide which we have in the Philippines, the final product were six individual uh, change stories. And there is another video that is like describing the method methodology that was used to produce those videos. But the third example that I would like to, to present is the one of Timor-Leste. In Timor-Leste, something similar happened, but was made with cameras. And uh, in Timor-Leste, we had a, a participatory photo evaluation and uh, it was undertaken focusing on the community level. The photo evaluation was meant to bring evidence about changing behaviors, attitude and practices. The, the evaluation supported the community to reflect about programs, especially program results. The participation community were located in the most remote area. And when a person from Timor-Leste came to explain us this experience, they said that there was a kind of excitement in the communities because First of all, it was not common to have a mission in their area. Second, those people were not so used to use camera and were not asked to, to make this kind of exercise. So it is not about only the final product, but in this case, was a publication, an exposition, and, um, and, um, and a communication campaign linked to the evaluation. But what was interesting is, is the process of making people think about the impact of a program in their life and asking them to to, to share their voice, to share their point of view. Um, I, will, I will say that uh, at the end of this process, what was done was a, uh, was a national exhibition. The national exhibition, I hope I will be able to pronounce it, was called Yan Husirai, 
that means voices from the community. It was organized uh, on a uh, key participatory country evaluation findings. The exposition was both brought back to the communities, but was also like owned by the government, but in fact put it in the first floor of our building, so that people that came in could see uh, the photo exposition. I think that it was, it, it was pretty um, uh, cost effective in the sense that we had a, a good media coverage and, uh, and that it helped the accountability of the program both, um, you know, the, uh, one of the principles of the Paris Declaration is mutual accountability. So it should be both downward and upward. And I think this kind of exercise also has the accountability not toward donor but toward communities. The fourth example and last, I hope I have still time, yeah, a couple of minutes. Is, is the one of, of Ecuador, uh, where uh, two programs closing between February and March 2012. One year after, we made a sustainability evaluation based on, eva on, on phot uh, using uh, photographic tools. So it was done one year later. The purpose of this evaluation was to access sustainability of economic initiative at individual, collective, communitarian, and cooperative level. Um, the study is qualitative in nature, but it, when we present the photo, we also have a description that mainly points out the quantitative indicator of, of each, uh, of each uh, communitarian group, and also some analysis about if the, if the program is still working on or not. In this first slide, we'll see a very nice picture, but in the second one, you will also see some groups where actually the investment was done, but the, the business unit is not working, and some of the reasons why they are not working. Um, I finally, I would like just mention a couple of uh, value added that I think that, uh, that this kind of evaluation uh, can, uh, can, uh, can bring uh, to our agencies. That is, first of all, our experience shows that the more we increase agent participation in evaluation processes, the more we generate ownership. Uh, video and photo evaluation can be used as part of overall evaluation processes. And visual evaluation suggests that the ways to bring communities on board and manners to share results with them and to be accountable to both national and local counterparts and people. And we strongly believe that this kind of participatory evaluation processes and visual tool can provide pathways to share results and to different audiences. But this that brings me to the second consideration that evaluation is a lot of time uh, a matter of a niche. We produce it in uh, experts are the one that write evaluation, mm -hmm. but and when these reports go to policymakers, sometimes have an impact, but a lot of time quickly, uh, quickly are condemned to oblivion because we pass to the next evaluation, uh, next program implementation, so, and we a lot of time is more kind of checklist. While I think that in, uh, some of these tools have the value added, but if we cannot influence policy maker, at least we can generate broader discussion. And I think that this format helped to make a transition from a niche toward communities, reach broader audiences. They account for real people life, uh, for real people voices, and complement, uh, and I stress it for the last time, we complement traditional <coughs> form of evaluation because here the analysis is a lot of time is poor. So if you want uh, an in-depth analysis about like this important uh, capacity building statistical in the statistical uh, um, uh, office, you really need a, a traditional evaluation. And uh, to take away, I will say that there are three elements. The first one is undertaking more inclusive evaluation processes is possible if we invest in evaluation. But for UN offices, it's important to include M&E budget in the program because the core funding of our offices do not have money mm -hmm. to invest in, in monitor evaluation in a stable way. Uh, some agency, yes, probably UNICEF is more investing in this kind mm -hmm. of, uh, of, uh, of exercise, but in general, RC office not. And, uh, and what we suggest to countries that between the three and five percent of the budget of a program should be allocated to monitor and evaluation uh, processes. The second one take away is that probably evaluation is not an exert is an, uh, it's an exercise to have a product, but it's more a collective learning process. And these kind of processes can bring people on board and enlarge the base of people that can learn from evaluation. And the third one is that evaluation has been done a lot of time top down and uh, and 
while our program should be participatory and we and we pretend to be participatory in the implementation if, uh, evaluation is a lot of time very technocratic and finally I would like just to acknowledge uh, the people who were involved that were the, uh, in this presentation that give me feedback that are the offices in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Colombia, Ecuador, Ethiopia, Honduras, Mauritania, Morocco and the Philippines and Timor-Leste and especially Nadia Hari, Reggie Gillen, Pablo Galarazza, etc. and the colleagues that were involved into this because actually uh, we think that our role in, in the headquarters is just providing the services by giving voices to them in, in this kind of platform. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.